these are 100 Lego buildings. And I really want to knock them over. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to build them all. Including creating my dream Lego display, combining 10 skyscrapers, and building Lego in the most futuristic city on Earth. But let's start with my absolute favourite theme, modular buildings. I first built the pet shop, an older set which is two buildings in one and admittedly kind of basic, even if it comes with two Lego frogs and loads of other animals. That reminds me, do you think there are going to be more Lego frogs, carrots or bananas in these buildings? Comment your guess and I'll reveal the answer at the end. Then I built the Grand Emporium, glorious on the outside, but once again bizarrely empty on the inside. I mean this entire floor of the shop has only three items for sale, as does the next floor. That said, it's got some really cool features, including a functional revolving door, which I can't seem to stop myself spinning. It's like a built-in fidget spinner. These next two older modulars, however, definitely don't disappoint. The Town Hall and the Fire Station. The Town Hall is majestic, a fitting centerpiece for any LEGO city, and the mayor even has a frog sculpture on his desk. 41 years later, I built the Fire Station, featuring a vintage fire engine and upside-down frogs as hooks for the helmets. Then I built the Boutique Hotel, Police Station and Assembly Square, which technically counts as three buildings. I've built each of these before, but sadly they didn't survive moving house. And finally, the recently released Natural History Museum, containing a space exhibit, an accidentally smashed artifact, and dinosaur bones, which use white bananas for the ribcage. Add them to the modulars I built previously, and this looks amazing! Moving on to Minecraft. Most of the buildings seem to be animal or food shaped. There's a rabbit house, with our first two carrots, an axolotl house, with a lot of little axolotls, there's a tongue twister, then a bee house, a fox house, a mushroom house, a pumpkin house, and a pig house. One of them has a Lego Minecraft frog. I also built an abandoned village and a bakery, but they're neither animal or food. Now I'm going to be honest, I don't know what's going on here. It makes me feel dreadfully old, but it's certainly very colourful. And talking of colourful, next up is Friends. LEGO Friends has quickly become one of my favourite themes, thanks to the pure creativity of the sets. Like check this out, a theatre with a hinged front, real curtains and interchangeable backdrops. Or this, the botanical gardens, with all manner of cleverly built plants using everything from frogs and saxophones, to mohicans and bird nests. I also built an otter rescue centre, a pet adoption centre, a ski slope, a pizzeria, pancake shop and donut shop, and a community kitchen. What's really cool about this set is it can be combined with another set, this colourful skyscraper, and it gave me a very tall idea. These are 10 of them, and I spent a quite frankly delirious amount of time building them all. I'm going to combine them into one mega skyscraper, stacking them floor by floor until it falls. I started with the standard 4 stories, then quickly built upwards to 12. It still felt surprisingly stable, but 16 was definitely creeping into the danger zone. It's really starting to look impressive now. These are all the levels still to go, and I should mention I'm filming on my stairs because it's the highest point in my house. Another four and we're halfway, and it's beginning to lean really quite substantially, but by floor 26, I could sense it was about to fall. This is going to fall the second I take my hand off. What? That wasn't supposed to happen. What do I do now? The solution? Throw some of the remaining floors at it. My apologies, I'm getting distracted, and it doesn't really seem fair to count them as 10 separate buildings, so we're just going to call it one. Next up then, a new theme, Dreams. Like with Friends, these sets are all wildly colourful and inventive. I built a tiny village, with two Lego frogs, something called the Stable of Dream Creatures, and the Fantastical Treehouse. I'm out of my depth again here, but Fantastical really is the word, and that's not even to mention these adorable mushroom people. Whilst I don't pretend to understand it, I do really like it. LEGO City obviously had to feature at some point, and there were some really cool sets, including a ski slope and a ski resort, a modern house, an ice cream parlour, and a fire station. I particularly... I particularly... I, I really like the train station, which oddly comes with a bus and not a train. And this town centre set with loads of different parts was really interesting too. I'm saying really way too much. I finished with this, the biggest LEGO City set ever released. And I promise you I did build it. You see, most LEGO sets are built on a single unified base plate, but this one uses loads of smaller plates loosely connected, so when I tried to pick it up, well, this happened. 
I'm far too dejected to try and rebuild it, so let's just skip ahead to the miscellaneous round. I started with two haunted houses, one more traditionally spooky, and one that is in fact a theme park drop ride. And it actually works. The riders go up, the doors open, and then they plummet. There's also a secret button that reveals a spooky curse. Ooh. Then I built the Monkey Kid City of Lanterns. Again, it's amazing. Although again, I don't know what's going on, but it's certainly a lot. A lighthouse followed, which like the drop ride, actually works. How ridiculous is that? That's made of Lego. The mechanism inside this thing is genius. I have no idea how people come up with this stuff, but I'm very glad they do. Sticking with the maritime theme, I built the El Dorado Fortress and the Viking Village. The fortress is a remake of a classic pirate set, and the colours are therefore quite retro and basic, which isn't really my thing. The Viking Village, however? Well, it was voted for as a LEGO Ideas runoff, beating my all-time favourite submission, Mini Golf, designed by LEGO Paradise. I really wanted to therefore resent it, but I ended up quite liking it instead. Okay, next I built the Home Alone house, full of Easter eggs and Christmas wonder, then the US office, which is even more Easter eggs. I'll point out some of my favourites. The stapler and jelly, Dwight's shrewd buck, Kelly's birthday sign, the whole Andy made in the wall, and of course Kevin's chili. The Queer Eye set is pretty similar, and although I've never seen or even heard of it before, it was refreshing to build a set with a starkly modern interior. Finally I built the A-frame cabin, and drumroll please, there are paper bags. This really felt like a big deal. Lego itself is obviously plastic, but it's not single-use plastic. It lasts many decades and can be played with and passed down through generations. But the bags it comes in just go straight in the bin. It's pure waste. My point is, it's fantastic to see these start appearing in sets. And what a marvellous set it is, even including a sneaky Lego frog. Our next theme is Disney. Let's start with the mini sub theme. I built the mini Palace of Agrabah, the mini Haunted Mansion, and the mini Disney Castle. As much as I wish it was full size, I do love this miniature Haunted Mansion. And as for the mini castle, well, there is a full size version, and it is magnificent. It's huge. This is it next to my cat for scale. Oh wow, you broken it. I have heavily modified the back with additional characters and pieces. It's maybe too much, but I like it. And the icing on the cake? It comes with five frogs, including four ingeniously used as table legs. Then I built Elsa's castle, which is again enormous and delightful. The characters, the transparent pieces, the grand staircase, the iridescent stickers, they just did a really good job on this one. But it raises something of a semantic conundrum. Does Olaf's nose count as a carrot? I mean, it's objectively not a Lego carrot piece, but it's orange, carrot-shaped, and clearly intended to represent one. Hmm, let's consult our resident carrot expert. What do you reckon, Maisie? Looks like it's a yes. Maisie, no, give him back. Next up, Up, which again could benefit from being a little bigger, but is highly detailed nonetheless, and has some amazing minifigures. But the crown jewel is undoubtedly this, the Peter Pan flying over London diorama. I'm a huge Peter Pan fan, and this is the first time there's been a Wendy minifigure. Plus it's just a very unique set with the blue colour scheme, mixed use of scales, and it even glows in the dark. I then built the Three Wish sets, a movie I admittedly haven't seen, plus Ariel's Underwater Palace, and something called the Sanctum Sanctorum. I haven't seen any of the Marvel movies either, but this reminds me of the modular buildings. Beautiful, intricate, and massive. The interior is equally detailed, with tons of easter eggs so I'm told, and a door that takes you somewhere different each time you open it. And finally I splurged on an old set I've been desperate to get, Woody's Roundup. This came out 14 years ago, has some absolutely incredible minifigures, and some very nice touches. I love it so much. The next theme is Ninjago. Yeah, it's just one set. I probably should have included it in the miscellaneous section. I don't even have much to say about it. It's pretty cool, I guess. Now before we head to the other side of the planet for the final sets, let's quickly squeeze in Christmas, although I'm missing four of the boxes. I built all of the Winter Village sets in the Christmas Train video two years ago, but afterwards they were not in great condition, covered in fake snow and residue from all the moss. I took them apart brick by brick, meticulously cleaning and rebuilding them. And I'm so glad I did. There's Santa's visit, a fire station, a train station, which again oddly includes a bus, a bakery, a toy shop, an elf house, and a market, including a working carousel. I then built last year's Holiday Main Street, and this year's Alpine Lodge. Which brings us to 91 LEGO buildings. Just look at them all. I even managed to salvage three quarters of the skyscrapers. The rest are sadly in this tub here. We've got my overly crowded Christmas display, and of course, the modulars.
So for the remaining nine, we're going to head halfway around the world. This is the Singapore skyline set, and I'm going to build it inside that building right there, the Marina Bay Sands. Singapore has some of the best modern architecture in the world, often called the Garden City, and it's immediately apparent why. It's almost bang on the equator, and the tropical heat means it's essentially a city built in a jungle. It also means you see some pretty amazing things while walking around. I've been lucky enough to stay in some incredible rooms with some incredible views, but surely this must take the cake. That is magnificent. I built the Lego set as the sun went down, and it was just wonderful. Obviously featuring the Marina Bay Sands itself, which I'm delightedly demonstrating from its rooftop infinity pool, one raffles place, the OCBC Center, the Singtel Tower, the Fullerton Hotel, which side note, there's also this giant Lego model of, the colourful buildings of the Boat Quay, and Lao Passat, an octagonally shaped food court. I'm also going to count one of the super trees as a building, since it does have a bar inside. Which brings us to 99, over 100,000 pieces, 6 bananas, 7 carrots, and a mind-blowing 32 Lego frogs. And so it's time for building 100. It's actually a Singapore exclusive 3-in-1 set, which can be built either as a Kavanagh Bridge, which isn't a building, the Super Trees, which kind of are buildings but I've already done, and finally as a Changi Airport Tower. Amazing. Now I really need to sleep.